Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. So today we are in my house and we are doing a bookshelf tour of all of my bookshelves. So we just bought these shelves. I say all of them. I guess I actually have to go upstairs because there's a little bit more upstairs. But this is the most part of them down here. And we just got these shelves recently at Ikea. Um, they've been stored in boxes since we bought a new house last uh, August. So it's been about a year that these have been either in boxes or mostly still at my parents' house, which is like two hours away. So here they are. Um, and I thought I might show you just what's on the shelves. Some of them are my books. Some of them are my husband's books. Some of them are just a bunch of classic books, as you will see. So I'm going to switch over in just a minute to my phone camera. So it's going to look probably a little bit different. It's probably going to sound a little bit different. Um, but I thought that way I can show you close up on the shelves what I've got. I'm not going to go through every book that would take forever, but I'm going to just kind of show you the series and the general kind of theme of the sorts of books that I own. So I've not read all these by far. I mean, I've probably read half of them maybe we'll see i don't know we'll find out but lastly i want to explain what this is oh my gosh i just like spit on my arm <laughs> uh, i want to explain what this is this is a bed um the camera is currently sitting on a bed so this is actually a spare bedroom I say spare bedroom. My husband actually sleeps in here most of the time because it's dark and cold. Um, it's supposed to be a storage room, really, I think. But we turned it into an extra, well, or his bedroom. We turned it into a bedroom. And so, yes, this is the bed. And rather than move the entire bed, which we could have done for this video or for any of these videos, I was like, nah, it's fine. Just literally, it looks great except for, you know, this. <laughs> so just pretend like that's not there and it's fine. Um, but anyway, let's get started and I'll show you what's on my shelves. Okay, so here we go. Now we're on to the actual shelf tour. So this is shelf number one. Um, ignore the books in the corner or the boxes because yes, that's where some of these books came from and we gotta get rid of those. Um, actually, you know what? Let's not start with my favorite shelf. Let's save it to last. Let's start, let's start on this end. So this shelf right here is mostly my husband's shelf is what I'm gonna call it. Um, it's pretty much all his books. <laughs> Here's his Mickey history statues. So my husband used to be a, a history teacher before he was a technology coordinator. So he loves history, but he also is a huge Disney nerd, Disney fan, I should say. And of course I love Disney now too, but yeah, he's literally got history Mickey stuff. Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, he's got some random world literature books and some random history books and things like that. But for the most part, he's got, well, and you know, when he was going to learn Japanese, <laughs> um, his high school that he graduated from yearbooks and things, but mostly as you can see, it is very, very pretty, beautiful collections of, you know, graphic novels and mangas and things like that, that are, um, mostly, you know, superhero related for sure. Uh, this one, he actually has two sets of and the other sets upstairs. I don't know how he wound up with two sets of those, but his books are all really pretty. And you're going to see in a minute. I mean, mine look like they're from a secondhand store. So, <laughs> you know, they don't really go together. He's got all of his overlord books, like some sort of manga thing that was like anime, but look how pretty, I mean, he's actually got, you know, I mean, these are so pretty, like, the Green Lantern. <laughs> so I am jealous because they're all beautiful. Although I'll tell you what, they are heavy and we've moved these twice now. We moved into an apartment when we first got married and we had to carry them up two flights of stairs to the third floor. Now we've moved them here. So they've been everywhere. On the bottom down here, he's even got a Sandman statue. I've tried to read Sandman. I couldn't get into it. Maybe I didn't give enough of a shot. I only read like volume one, but we've got these gigantic box sets oh my gosh like I can't even really lift it with one hand it is so heavy I can't even lift it but yeah he's got all of these oh my goodness um there's like five of them I didn't even think there were that many Sandman things so I'm not even sure he's got these absolute justice absolute Batman I mean I guess we need to check out one let's just see what absolute Batman is okay I got absolute Batman out let's see oh yeah it's just tons and tons of Batman. Okay, so I mean, is there a table of contents? Is it a, oh, the long Halloween. So is it a bunch of different Batman stories? I'm gonna assume that absolute Batman would mean, oh no, this one's just called the long Halloween. So this is just like one story. My goodness. It's massively long. Are these pages even numbered? Hmm. No, yes. 370 some pages. I didn't know comics were this big or this long. I guess it's a whole volume of, you know, a bunch of the little comics put together. All right, so that was shelf number one. So it only took five minutes. That wasn't too bad. Shelf number two looks uh, like a totally different bookstore than shelf number one if you went into the bookstore. 
So shelf number two is classics. These are all my classics I've collected over the years. I basically have every classic that you could ever want to read, plus all the cliff notes on the bottom to go with them. So we'll just kind of start up here. Um, there's going to be a lot of Shakespeare, things like that. You can kind of see what I've got. I have not read all of these. I would say I've maybe read half. Like I had to read all the King's Men for school. Of course, I've read lots of, you know, Sherlock Holmes. I had to read The Scarlet Letter for school, Walden. That's why I have some of these I bought them for school. Some of them I just bought because I was like, oh, I should own this because I was an English teacher before I was a librarian. I was like, I have to read Lord of the Flies even though I was never assigned it. How I wound up with these old copies, I don't know. Well, actually, I think my parents bought me a lot of them at yard sales, honestly. Uh, Fall of the House of Usher. Hey, there's some Mark Twain in there. Oh, Christmas Carol. Some of them are like a little more modern, like Dust Tracks on a Road is not quite as old. It's not from like, I think it's, I mean, it's definitely 1900s, <laughs> maybe 1960s, something like that. Um, I read that for school too. So it's been a long time. Oh, how is this dusty already? I mean, I just bought this. I don't know if you can, I don't know. It's not too bad, but hmm, weird. <laughs> okay, let's see. Art of War. Oh, this is one I want to read soon. Rebecca. So this book is supposed to be like sort of a mystery, possibly even like murder mystery, maybe. Here's all of Edgar Allan Poe. I used to work at the Jesse Stewart Foundation in Ashland. So I've got some signed copies of these. I helped edit this book, so my name's in it. My name's in this book somewhere in the back too for editing. Oh, Frank McCourt, love Frank McCourt. I don't know where my copy of Angela's Ashes has gone to, but it was signed, so hopefully I can find that. Um, oh yeah, I think my, my name's in this one too for editing, so that's exciting. Um, moving on, so lots of old things. Oh, this is my teacher copy of Anthem. I taught Anthem when I taught 10th grade English, so I have a lot of notes in there. Same thing with To Kill a Mockingbird. That was my teacher copy back when I taught it. More, okay, why do I have Complete Stories of Edgar Allan Poe? Complete Stories and Poems of Edgar Allan Poe. So I guess I could get rid of the other one, but it's prettier. That's probably why I kept both. Hmm. So you might see some repeats. It's very possible. Um, I don't even know what I own. Who knows? Hey, look. A Fairy Queen Illustrated Edition. Huh. Edmund Spencer, the Fairy Queen. That was like the most exciting version of that that's probably ever been made. Um, oh, here's a book about the ACT and the SAT called like The Big Test or something about our obsession with testing in the United States. Um, okay, let's see. Moving down. We're almost done with this shelf. Wait, did I skip a shelf? It's this one. Yeah. Um, Hemingway. Complete short stories of Mark Twain. I've always wanted to read Love and Time of Cholera, but I have not done so. Oh, here's all four of my complete volumes of Shakespeare. So you got like comedies, tragedies, histories, and then romances and poems. And I got those from college and uh, kept them. I decided not to sell them back or anything. I actually got free textbooks in college, which was awesome. And if they didn't want them back, we got to keep them. So actually the, they were free. Uh, my little collection of William Faulkner here. I have read The Sound and the Fury, Absalom, Absalom, and Light in August, but it has been so long. No one should have to read Silas Marner. I had to read it as a freshman. Who makes freshmen read that? I had to read this. That was awful. No, I didn't. I read To the Lighthouse, but it was really terrible. The Last Babylon was really good. It was like futuristic and sci-fi and like how, like sort of a survival story about like, you know, if civilization kind of ended, what would happen. Ooh, complete Oscar Wilde. More Poems and Tales of Edgar Allan Poe. Dracula. This was the copy I had to actually like take notes in and annotate. And it was awful. I hated Dracula. Love Frankenstein. Hate Dracula. I love that little mini series that they had about Scarlet Pimpernel. But this one, um, I've never read the book, but I want to. Last shelf of these. So I've got a few more things. Ooh, this was really good. Norse mythology as retold by Neil Gaiman or Gaiman, however you say it. Um, so it was pretty exciting. The Count of Monte Cristo. Definitely want to read this. I started it as well. Oh, yep. You can see my bookmark. Well, maybe you can. Let's see if I can get it out. There we go. <laughs> Didn't get very far. Someone really in decided it was a classic, so I stuck it there. Oh, it's falling apart. Um, Godfather. I'd like to read that at some point. Chocolate War. That's more of a kid's book, but you know, sort of still a classic. Don't think I ever read it, though. Ooh, Hamlet. That's my copy of Hamlet where I took notes. Robert Frost. Ooh, yeah. Poems by Robert Frost. Nice. Ooh, one of my favorite books of all time ever. It's going to be in a video later about books that changed my life. Taught that book for years, too. I've already talked about this book in another series because, or another video, because I love Death Comes as the End. It's so good. Even though, why not have 
Classics of Moral and Political Theory. It's gigantic. <laughs> it was an old college textbook too, but I use one thing out of it for when I teach English 101. Ooh, Cleopatra. I mean, I need to read that for sure. Uh, a few others. Complete stories of um, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. All of Sherlock anyway. And this was a book, a, po a book of poetry by one of my, uh, this is my former English teacher. On the very bottom here, I'll just show you real quick. These are the ones that have like Shakespeare writing on one side and like modern day translation on the other. Okay, then I just have a whole bunch of basically spark notes, cliff notes. Well, cliff notes, that's what they were called, right? These were called monarch notes, a really old version of that. Now everybody uses spark notes online, but back in the day before all that, there was cliff notes. So, you know, Great Gatsby, you could go and read the plot summaries and you could read the uh, the, like the theme and that kind of stuff. Breaking Bad and philosophy. How cool. <laughs> okay, this is not a book. I mean, like a classic, but it's the history of Nightwitch, which is my favorite band ever. Wedding planning guide from way back. Uh, a little Chicago photo album that doesn't have any pictures in it. But my brother-in-law and his uh, wife just moved to Chicago, so I might put some in there. And pictures from some random trip to New Orleans or something. So that is shelf number two. Um, definitely looks like a used bookstore, but I like it. I like that it's a different style than this one. So the third style is kind of like all the pretty fantasy novels and stuff. So these are my favorite books. So we'll move on to the last shelf. So we're going to start at the top, all, all Anne Rice. So this is my Anne Rice collection, starting with book one through book, you know, 10. This was book 10 of the original Vampire Chronicles. Then she came out with these three more recently when she decided she would write about vampires again. Two offshoots of those, of that series. And then uh, the Witching Hour series, which is so good. And this book is falling apart because I've read it and I got it used. And my husband just bought me a brand new hardback copy. I just don't have it yet. And then I'll have to eventually get these two as well. The Mummy's good. That's the sequel to The Mummy. Then she started a werewolf series. The Wolf Gift and The Wolves of Midwinter, not near as good. There's a reason why I have two copies of this book, even though it wasn't very good. And it's because when I, um, I bought it the first time and then I went to a book signing, but the only way you could get a ticket to the book signing was to buy it at that specific bookstore. But I'd already bought it. So here we go. Bought it again. <laughs> Uh, Angel Time, which has a sequel called like Of Love and Evil, but I, I have it somewhere and I can't find it. So it must be back at my parents' house. Violin, I've never read and I want to. I've read all the rest of these. Um, I've never read Cry to Heaven, but I would like to. I read Servant of the Bones. It was pretty good. I've never read The Feast of All Saints. So I do have a few Anne Rice books left to read. Her son also is a writer. So he wrote this and I got it signed as well um, when I went to go see her. Not good. I didn't like it. So now we have Lord of the Rings, the whole series, obviously. The Hobbit is upstairs with my children's books. Uh, Game of Thrones and Philosophy. Okay, so here starts all the Game of Thrones. So... Game of Thrones and Philosophy, Game of Scones, which is a parody cookbook of the Game of Thrones, All Men Must Dine. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I got it at a bookstore called The Book Loft in Columbus, Ohio, in the German village. It has like 70 rooms. It's crazy and they're all super tiny. It's like the craziest bookstore. It's like a maze. It's awesome. If you've never been to The Book Loft, if you live anywhere near Columbus, Ohio, go there. <laughs> this book had a random... George R. R. Martin short story in it. It's like one of the Duncan Egg stories, uh, offshoot of Game of Thrones. So I asked a lady that I, we rented a beach house from one year if I could keep this because it was in her beach house and I wanted that story and she said yes and I left her a book instead. <laughs> so here's Game of Thrones. This one is signed even though it's just a little paperback and this one is signed and I actually have two copies of A Dance with Dragons. I don't know where the other one is. But one, once again, I had to buy, it's just what happened with Anne Rice book. I had to buy another copy to be able to go to the book signing. And then this is the collection that just came out not too long ago of all three Duncan Egg stories, The Night, A Night of the Seven Kingdoms. So it was, uh, yeah, it takes place, what does it say? A century before Game of Thrones. So it was really good too. And some of it does relate to Game of Thrones. And then here's our little throne. We're not going to talk about how I accidentally broke that and something over here that one and the tips of those I'm not sure somehow I knocked it off I know it was my fault and I wait I wasn't gonna tell my husband and <laughs> I was just gonna see if he noticed and eventually I think I told him but no one ever notices you know it, it's so random anyway it makes more sense that these would all be different heights it's not gonna the real throne doesn't look like that if you listen to George R. R. Martin he doesn't even think it would look like that 
Fire and Blood, The History of the Targaryens. I didn't get too far. I mean, I got decently far. It's huge. I mean, I'm on page like 250 or something. Um, so, oh, but this is a pretty, oh, I'm going to want that bookmark back. I have a lot of these. Maybe I'll do a bookmark uh, tour one day too. I've got a lot of cute little metal bookmarks <laughs> with sayings on them. And then the World of Ice and Fire has pictures and things like that. So there we go. All right, moving on to the Jim Butcher shelf. You can tell I like the Dresden Files a lot. So here's all my paperbacks that I bought used from someone that I know. And then eventually, I think when I got to book 10 is when I had to start waiting on the books. So that's book 10. Then, yeah, I waited on each of these after that. So book 11, 12 changes. This is crazy. It's, yeah, literally life-changing, game-changing. My husband's not got there yet. My husband is on this one, book seven, Deadbeat. And he is listening to all the audiobooks. So he's got a ways to go before he finishes the series. He's not even half, halfway finished. Book 13 is my least favorite. I've been talking about these a lot, I know, in my latest videos. Cold Days is my favorite one, book 14. Book 15 was really good too, though, Skin Game. And then book 16 just came out. It's really more like half of a book. And the other half is called Battleground, and it comes out in just a couple months. Actually, no, it's next month. It's September. Um, he wrote two different, like, little... These are, like, collections of his short stories that are in the Dresden Files universe. He wrote another book that he's never written a sequel to that's really big called The Aeronauts Windless, the Cinder, the, the Cinder Spire series. But he's never, it continued, you know, just this one. And it's like a, you know, you can tell it's kind of steampunky. Um, I did not like it really at all. I bought it because I thought I would because I trust Jim Butcher, obviously. <laughs> but he, um, his other series, the Furies of Calderon series is not my favorite either. So I don't even own those. I have the complete collection of H.P. Lovecraft with this interesting little homemade bookmark that I made one time that needs to be finished on the edges as you can tell but it says you can't have too many books and I remember stabbing myself a lot trying to make this thing because it was cross stitch <laughs> so anyway, I'm just gonna take that out of there so all HP Lovecraft love Cthulhu woo hail Cthulhu okay <laughs> Watchmen love it better than the movie Unweaving the Rainbow I've talked about I read a book by this author Mar Marisha Pessel and I've talked about a book by her called Never World Wake in one of my videos and it was amazing, so I thought I would try this one. Okay, these are random, weird romance novels. Oh my gosh, they're, it's so bad. I did not read any of these. I mean, seriously, shadow magic. I mean, just look at these covers here. Is it this one that looks, I mean, look at that. That looks so stupid. Random books. I tried this series. Liked the first one, okay. It's fine, whatever. Oh gosh, Night Fires. I mean, seriously, what, what have I bought in the past? There was like a collection of them or something. The Host, never did read. Oh, this, yeah, this is what the fourth Pirates of the Caribbean movie is kind of based on by this Tim Powers. It was actually really good. It was probably actually better than the Pirates of the Caribbean movie. So yeah, Tenth Kingdom. Oh, love me some Tenth Kingdom back in the day. Great miniseries, but the show came first and then they made this book based on it. Okay, Good Omens, amazing. I've tried Assassin's Apprentice, can't get into it. Hitchhiker's Guide, some random books I've not read. That one, Map of Time, sounded cool. Haven't read it. Still never read Shauna Ra. Okay, now we're into all the Elizabeth Peters books. She was an, uh, the real author is an Egyptologist. So she writes all these set in Egypt, like mysteries and like the 1920s Victorian England kind of things. And my favorite one, though, is the Vicky Bliss series. But I've talked about it in another video, so I won't talk about it again here. But it's in my lesser known books I love video. All right, here's all my damn brown books. Deception Point was actually really good. Loved it. Uh, of course, love Angels and Demons. And I loved Angels and Demons more than I did Da Vinci Code. After that, these other two didn't care. I mean, they were like tour guide. Like, it was like reading a tour guide of Italy or something. I'd, the plots were not even great. I didn't really like these two at all. Um, okay, I need to zoom out a little bit. Um, some more books. Oh, how Elizabeth Peters. She needs to be, a, she's in the wrong spot. She needs to be over there. Uh, this book is like signed. This random Cleopatra book is like autographed. I got it used somewhere. Uh, some random series I've not read. Michael Crichton, need to read. Uh, oh, this was a really good series. Or There's two of them. City of Dark Magic. I remember it had to do with like music and like she was obsessed with Beethoven, but then there was also time travel. My Drunk Kitchen, Hannah Hart, it's her cookbook. And I tried to learn how to play the guitar. And that's to my piano upstairs. That's the guide to it. So finally, not that you care, but on the bottom, there's just some French books. So I uh, took French in high school and for four years. And then I minored in French in college. 
but I can't really speak it very well. I can read it decently, but speaking it's a whole other ball game. Um, but yeah, so I've got Harry Potter in French, the third and uh, third and fourth books. So pretty cool. Or no, sorry, first and third. Yeah, first and third. There we go. Um, so yeah, those are some French books that I will maybe get around to one day. So that was the fun books shelf, mostly. Clearly mostly fantasy and things like that. Uh, vampires, that sort of stuff. Then we had the classics shelf. And then finally we had the My Husband's Pretty comic books and some manga shelf. And this book shelf kind of sticks out farther than the other two in the middle. So I kind of like it because I think it looks good like that. So overall, ignore the bed. Once again, ignore the bed. <laughs> but this is what it looks like. Oh, I should show you upstairs. Okay, hang on. I'm going to pause and I'll be right back and I'm going to show you upstairs. Okay, and we're back for one last little section of this video because there are a few books I forgot about. It's mostly kid books, but I had to show you my Harry Potter books because obviously I own Harry Potter books. This is in another spare bedroom upstairs, by the way, that will eventually be the baby's room. So, of course, I put all the kids books up here just so eventually, you know, I know it'll be a while before they read Harry Potter. Definitely be a while before they read Cursed Child because no one should read that. <laughs> so yeah, just all the little extra things that go with it. Harry Potter and philosophy. That's good. You can see I have a lot of those. <laughs> uh, a parody of Harry Potter called Barry Trotter and the unauthorized parody. I think this was terrible. It came out like when I was really younger, <laughs> a lot younger. And I randomly have the cassette tapes for books three and four because those were my favorite and I would listen to them as a kid. So random old Harry Potter calendar. I did this wizard run thing. Um, ah, my Marauder's map. Here, I'll show you the Marauder's map. Yeah, so it actually like folds out and stuff. It's really hard to do this one-handed, but it does fold out into like a map thing. My actual Harry Potter wand from Universal Studios. Of course, I, I bought Harry's wand, even though he's not my favorite character. Sirius is my favorite character, but then Dumbledore and Snape are up there too. Um, and Lupin. So, but I had to buy Harry's wand because it's Harry Potter. This came with the little wizard run thing that I did. And then this was my medal. You can see it says finisher. And it's got just a little headwig. So that was for running and also got a shirt. And then it's like random books. These are not kids books, but they just wound up up here. Court of uh, Thorns and Roses series. First two, great. This one, terrible. This one, really awful. Uh, you know, my, what's it called? You know, Golden Compass series. Why are they backwards? That's annoying. Ender's Game, awesome. Never read the sequel. Scythe, not good. Oh, love Percy Jackson. Definitely can't wait to read those again. Might as well wait and read them with the kid. Liked the Red Pyramid, never read the sequels. The Hobbit, Darkest Rising. Uh, love, um, you know, this is the sequel to, what's it called? Wrinkle in Time. Yeah, and it's so pretty. This might be one of my favorite covers of all time ever. That should be a video, like the prettiest covers that I've ever seen. That's one of them. A random Goosebumps book, but I have the whole set, like all of them. So those will be for the kids. <laughs> oh, City Dream Books. I've talked about that one before. I've never read the sequel. Oh yes, you know, my essential Pokemon handbook. I'm almost level 40. Oh my gosh, tomorrow, tomorrow. By the time you watch this video, I will be level 40 in Pokemon Go. I'm just saying. And that's Iceland, by the way. I went to Iceland. That was the whole thing. I should do a video about that sometime. <laughs> so there you go. Oh yeah, this is my photo album book of Iceland. Um, and lastly, we have, oh, this book. You gotta see this one. This book is called The Ghost Keeper's Journal Field Guide. And when I was an elementary librarian for one year, a couple years ago, I bought this at the book fair. It's an augmented reality book. How cool is that? So like you literally get to certain pages and I mean, really any page, you can use your phone and scan it with the app like you have to have the app for this book and you scan this page and more stuff will pop up like see this box since it looks empty I bet something will pop up there um yeah you just never know like there could be writing on top of the page like that you don't even see kind of like a black light so it was really cool and there's a plot like it has a story it's an actual book um about these people trying to uh working for the society trying to find these ghosts or something so I don't know. It's really cool. I love this concept. Like, they should have more books like that. Oh, this is my favorite journal. Okay, ignore all the stack of books on the floor. That's a hot mess. Um, yeah, isn't this pretty? I mean, it's just, it's just so pretty. It's like the different seasons, I think. Wait, is it seasons? Yeah, spring, summer, fall, and winter. 
So anyway, yeah, super pretty. And it had books on it. So, you know, Aragon and like Eldest and stuff. Ooh, wreck this journal. That's fun. You get to like do stuff to the journal and wreck it. And it's hard for me to do that. <laughs> um, everything's falling down. Superhero book. How to be a superhero. Rock, paper, scissors guide. Rock, paper, scissors guide. Uh, I definitely read that when I was a kid. How to memorize all the presidents in order. Oh my gosh, I gotta stop taking these out. It's called Yo Millard Fillmore. Yep, tells you how to memorize them. Anyway, so that is, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm done. This is, I'm done. Ah. Okay, so that's like the small little bookshelf of extra things up here, and that's pretty much it. Okay, so thank you guys so much for watching this video. I know it was kind of long. It was really different and really strange, but hopefully you enjoyed seeing what books I have on my shelves. There are definitely a lot more books that I like. I just don't own them, I guess. So anyway, I'm going to have to see if I can get some more books built up and do another one of these in the future. Maybe next year I will have some different books on my shelves. So anyway, uh, I will see you guys later. Bye.